This video is about the different levels of organization. The reason scientists use this is that it's a method of going through and organizing things into categories depending on how specific scientists wish to be in their classification. For example, the biosphere is the broadest level here. It involves all of the living things on the planet. So this one really doesn't give us much in the area of specificity, but as we move down, we will become more and more precise. Uh, for example, if we move down to the biome level, this is an area where we're talking about regions that have similar levels of precipitation and similar temperatures. Those are the two main factors that influence biomes. You studied a lot of these last year in environmental science. So things like the taiga, you have um, you know, the tropical rainforest, the savanna, all of those different biomes, they all have certain characteristics in common. If we get down one level beyond that, with the ecosystem level. At this point, we're looking at all of the living and non-living factors in a given area. So we're defining now just a certain region. Uh, the thing about biomes, if we go back up one second, biomes are global. So for example, if we're talking about the desert, you know, there's deserts in Africa, there's deserts in Australia, there's deserts in America, there's deserts all over the world. They're all the same biome, though, because they have at least similar levels of precipitation and similar temperatures. If we talk about an ecosystem, though, now we're narrowing down to one particular geographic location. So the deserts in Australia would be one particular ecosystem, even though it's in the same biome as, say, deserts in um, Nevada which would still be uh, a desert biome, but it's a different ecosystem because it has a different location. Another factor to remember with ecosystems is it does involve non-living factors. So things like the water in the area, the temperature, factors like that are still considered. Once we go one level down to community, we are no longer worried about non-living factors. It's just the different species of living factors in a given area and how they interact. So we've got all of the animals, we've all of the plants, you know, all of the bacteria, all of those factors that interact with each other inside of an area make up a community. A population, one level down, is just a group of the same species. So in this case, we're sort of focusing in on these guys, if they're moose or elk. Uh, and then we've got one individual at the bottom level, obviously just one uh, individual person or um, organism from a species. So we'll go through and I'll give you something to uh, write down and sort of break these down. I won't always do this throughout the year in the videos, but this will give you an idea of what you should be writing down while you're watching things. So hopefully this will give you some insight into what I'm looking for when you're taking notes as you're watching the video. So for the biosphere, we talked about this. These are all of the living things on the planet. Now in the biome, we said they have two things in common. They have similar levels of temperature and rainfall and precipitation. For an ecosystem, this one's a little bit more complicated. Here we're looking at the living and non-living factors. But it's in a given location. Remember, that's really what sets apart the ecosystem from the biome. I used that desert example previously. So for community, this is all of the living things. Population is a group of a single species. And then the individual is just that. It's just one organism. You know, out of that particular population. So again, I won't always do this for you, but this gives you an idea of the kind of simple notes you should be taking as you're going through and watching the videos. Remember to use some strategies such as pausing the video and backing it up or like rewinding the video to catch things that you missed. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and take a minute to answer the questions after you're done here.